Hello and welcome to the training log for the fourth week of January 2023. This marks the one third point in the rip and tear program and my bulk. Uh, at the end of each one month phase in rip and tear, the AMRAP sets are dealer's choice for both weight and rep range. Uh, I chose to go with a mid low rep range for bench and squat, and for deadlift, I just did my own thing as I talked about last week. Before going to that, uh, I want to quickly talk about this specific lift that you're watching right now. Uh, this is a deficit deadlift done with the actual barbell versus the trap bar for once. And these are much harder, not only because the weight is shunted out in front of you versus directly under your center of gravity, but because you have to drag it up the plate stack. And the plate stack, being made of rubber bumper plates, is fairly grippy and has a pretty high friction, so very difficult. Moving on, for bench press, I hit a non-PR set of 365 for only three reps this week. I knew going into the set that it probably wasn't going to be a PR. I just didn't feel particularly strong, and I'd hit a pretty heavy upper body day the day before. Um, I knew that I wasn't going to hit the best bench sets in this program with the upper body hypertrophy done directly beforehand, but uh, still not a bad set by any means. Not nearly as good as the 355 by 5 as last week, but... If I can hit this kind of weight for this kind of reps on a bad day, quote unquote, I'm probably in a pretty good place. I'll also note that I'm still trying to keep the full thumb to grip for all my bench press sets. I do think it's going to pay off in the long term, uh, but still haven't fully adapted to it. For squats, I hit 555 for six reps. I was pretty happy with this set. This is at an 18 inch block, which as a reference point, 16 or 15 would be what I consider a good gym squat and 14 inches would be strictly below parallel for me anyways So this is pretty close to what I would consider a full good squat and it's 10 pounds heavier and three reps more than my best free squat PR with this bar Which would be 545 times three so good sign and I'm hoping that by the end of this program I'll be able to hit some solid squat PRs at full depth Also worth noting that I am pretty happy with how upright I am staying in these reps compared to some of my previous squats, which are very much good mornings. Uh, we'll see if that continues down to full depth and at heavier weights, but if nothing else, if I can maintain a higher torso position at these lower weights, that just means I'll be able to squat that much more when I convert to good mornings later on. As I mentioned last week, I've basically stopped following the programming when it comes to deadlifts. I don't need it. I'd rather just do my own thing. So instead of a deadlift AMRAP, on Friday, I did this, which is maxing out my hack deadlift, which is the barbell behind your feet deadlift. Uh, going into this, my PR was only eight plates. It was my weakest stance besides maybe sumo. And I managed to make it all the way up to nine plates, which in addition to being a 90 pound PR, uh, makes the third stance that I can pull over nine plates in, being conventional, Jefferson, and now hack. Um, I don't think very many people can claim that, so I'm pretty happy with that result. And it's always good to have another huge deadlift on the resume. Going forward, the goal for hack deadlift would be to eventually get at least 885, which would top Eric Bugenhagen's 880 pound unofficial record. Um, so it'd be really cool to add a third deadlift to the list of highest all time recorded obscure deadlifts. Talking about hack deadlifts, I recorded a side view of eight plates, which was my final warm up set. Uh, just to give you an idea of what a hack deadlift looks like technique wise. One of the big changes between a hack deadlift and a conventional is I had to learn to really overemphasize the upper back rounding versus trying to fight it. Um, in a conventional, upper back rounding makes you lose leverage, but on the hack deadlift, upper back rounding lets you essentially gain more leverage because the bar is on the opposite side of your body. So by really rounding my upper back, I can shoot my hips up. But unlike a conventional deadlift, where you essentially now have lost your leverage, in a hack deadlift, you're not really losing anything because the bar is already behind you and onto your center of mass. So I had to fight the urge to stay stiff and just really embrace upper back rounding for this. Next, we'll be looking at my arm focus hypertrophy day. Uh, now, I understand that arm days, or at least like they dedicate strictly to arms, is kind of a bro meme. But especially for me, where I'm definitely lacking in the arm department, I feel it gets necessary. And if nothing else, it's a day that has very little fatigue accumulation because you're not working terribly big muscles or using very large weights. So it's not hard to tack it on in what might otherwise be a rest day. So I start off with preacher curls. I like preacher curls because it's a heavy bicep movement that I know I'm not going to cheat because you're working off the pad, which prevents you from using significant momentum. 
So today I went a bit heavier than I normally do. I noticed that I tend to fall into ruts where I use the same weight for similar reps for multiple weeks just because it feels difficult and that's usually my metric for if it's a good hypertrophy workout or not. But sometimes you just need to actively put on more weight and make yourself do a few extra reps just to kind of make sure you keep calibrated to what actual failure feels like. Uh, so next up, I don't normally use these, but I wanted to kind of stick with the theme of doing some heavier work than normal with this uh, dip machine. Uh, it's not my favorite dip machine, although it worked pretty well. Um, it didn't hurt my shoulders too much, which is my usual complaint with a dip machine or with regular uh, body weight dips. But you can see I'm getting a pretty good contraction. I'm not going super deep because at a certain point you're no longer working the tricep. You're just kind of weirdly pushing with your shoulder and that's not particularly helpful. So I was pretty happy with this set. It worked out pretty well. Alternating back to biceps, um, I use my favorite bicep machine, which is this machine Preacher Curl. Um, I think that a lot of people poo-poo machines, specifically an arm machine, they wonder why you wouldn't just, you know, curl a dumbbell or a easy bar. Um, the reason I like this machine is that with most free weights at that top, uh, top of the contraction there, there's not much of a resistance profile left at that point. Uh, the weight is pushing down because that's how gravity works. So it's really just kind of resting on your forearm versus actually creating a lever against your um, elbow joint. Uh, but this machine works off with cables, so the resistance profile is consistent throughout the entire movement, meaning you're still getting resistance at the top of the movement, and that's an area that free weights don't usually hit. So you can see I'm really holding that contraction at the top, and it just lights my biceps up because you don't normally use that area because it's hard to set up a free weight curl where you still have resistance at that point unless you're doing like a spider curl or some kind of weird hanging curl. And those are just kind of a pain to set up and do, so I'd rather just use the machine which accomplishes the same thing much easier. Sticking to machines, uh, next up I have a tricep extension machine, which is one of the few tricep machines in the gym that actually fit me. Um, I like it a lot because it immobilizes my elbow joint, which I have a bad habit of really bringing my shoulders into a lot of tricep movements just by moving around the elbows and whatnot. But this kind of locks you into position and doesn't let you use anything but your triceps. So that's why I really like this machine, regardless of how silly it kind of looks from this angle. Again, I'm aware that I could accomplish something similar with a free weight or a cable setup, but the machine makes it easy and, uh, you know, why make things harder for yourself? Wrapping things up, I hit some cable curls. Uh, normally, I like to do these with my other arm braced on the cable stack across from me, but there weren't enough open stations today, so I had to do them kind of free hanging like this. I like this at the end because at the bottom there, it's kind of pulling your shoulder back and that bit of traction seems to... Uh, alleviate what little bit of shoulder discomfort I've worked up in the other movements, which for some reason arm days really is the one day that gets my shoulders worse than anything else, even worse than like benching or pressing. So who knows, but you know, if it works, it works. Last movement of the day is just straight up tricep extensions. Um, I'll do these lighter and with higher reps and kind of focus on just holding tension the entire time. Um, if I try and do these super heavy at this point in the day, it just kind of hurts my shoulder more than anything. So I've learned to just take them light, take them easy, Focus on never fully extending or fully retracting my elbow joint. Uh, just keep the tension on the muscle and, you know, just get a good pump. It's a nice way to finish off my workout. So it kind of knows the trend of ending with a pump workout for me. So that's week four. Uh, week five of rip and tear is kind of a lighter deload week. The first week of every phase is no AMRAPs, uh, higher reps, lower weight. So I won't have as much specifically to talk about, especially because I'm not sure if I want to recycle I perched for day right away with not much having changed. So if there's a specific topic you'd like me to see, like to see me go into more details on, uh, let me know in the comments. Or if you just have general suggestions or feedback, um, I'm still trying to get these better. I think I've hit a bit of a stride, but they can definitely be improved. So if there's any changes you'd like to see, please let me know so I can implement them and make these more enjoyable for everyone. Other than that, have a great week and I'll see you guys next time.